Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Avenger 2 and we're making a sequence called Dark Winter, so here we go. Okay, I think you get the idea. So basically, this patch is made up of a bass, a middle synth, which we're going to get to in shortly, and then the drums. So if we mute these first two, we just have our bass. And then we add our second oscillator. And then our drums. And this whole patch is played with one key, right? Everything you hear is in just Avenger, which is amazing. Okay, so let's go ahead and mute the drums, the second oscillator, and also go down to our master effects. Let's mute this here. Let's mute our sends, and then mute these first two effects racks here. Okay, so basically we have this bass going on right here. Now this one's not too complicated at all. Let's go to a new preset and then hit yes. And then uh, let's click this first filter. Okay, so now we're at pretty much at a default spot. You just kind of might look like this with the editor, right? So this first oscillator is going to be a saw wave and we're doing some unison at 60.17%. That's close enough, about 60%. Okay, so next thing, we're going to be going to a filter, which is going to be the Vintage 12. So we can go ahead and add that as well. So filter, Vintage 12, and our cutoff value is going to be 88.69. There we go. And then our envelope amount, once we start getting the ARP going, is going to be 51.83, so we can do that right now. Okay. So now we need to go check out our ARP here and turn, actually, before we get the ARP, we do have a sub going on as well, I believe. Yes, a sub a sub square, and the volume's gonna be at negative 4.76. Let's go ahead and add that. So it sounds kind of nasty already, right? So if we brought the filter all the way up. Have something kind of cool like that. Anyway. What we need to do is get to this ARP here. So let's route this to the ARP by go clicking on the ARP in the routing panel. And for the most part, a lot of the stuff we don't have to change. For the fixed note, we are gonna change this to core detection. And then if we look over here, this first note's gonna be a little bit longer so we can remove the second one and extend this guy like that. Then we have three short ones and then the fourth one's gonna be up one octave. So one, two, three, and then up one octave. And then we have two, uh, two short ones and then a long one. So two short ones and then a long one here. And then after the long one, we have three short ones, and then this one's gonna be up three semitones. So one, two, three. This fourth one is gonna be up three semitones. So we can click and drag up like that on this number down here. And that should be the patch, I believe. couple things we need to add as well. So back here, the velocity, I kind of just did a random thing, right? So I kind of dragged here and kind of just did a random thing. So I want these different notes to be a little bit different for the velocity, right? So this velocity is going to affect the filter cutoff, which if we go here to the filter, we need to drag this all the way up. So if we have something kind of quiet, like a low velocity note, or a high one, it's gonna be a little bit different slightly depending on how we uh, do that. So this is kind of just gonna be a random kind of thing. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. but definitely kind of cool. So we have our resonance at 14.46. Okay, a couple things we need to change or I guess add here. So the reason it sounds a little bit different here is because we have this cutoff on a macro down over here. So what we need to do is we need to drag this macro, right? Because right now it's at 22.89. So we can actually turn this to 22.89 for now and then drag and drop this guy onto the cutoff. And if we look at our mod matrix, the amount is 60.24. So we can just kind of increase this like that, 60.24 or close to it as we can. So it's pretty close. One thing we do need to change as well is the envelope. So basically we're gonna be using a little bit of spike here and this is gonna be at 7.83 and this gives us a nice little transient. 
but we don't want to overdo it too much. And then we're doing a little bit of spread as well at 27. So turn the spread to the right until we get to 27. That just moves the sound left and right through the stereo field. And then the last thing, we're gonna be changing the release to 1727. Something like that. And then we also are doing a little bit of curve. So if we right click this here, we can see that we have a curve on the release and that's gonna be at about negative 10 or so. Just a slight thing like that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we're using this first filter on a vintage low pass 12. So depending on the input signal, this can change the sound. So our input here is gonna be 153. So we need to increase our level knob. Something kind of like that. Okay, so we're pretty close here. Now, the other things that we're kind of looking at on this stack here, right, they're for, for the most part, they're pretty much the same, right? However, we are using our delay so we can turn this guy on. However, what we should do is turn the all of our racks off for now because we're going to get to the effects later, but we just want to have it routed here at about 20% there. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the next oscillator. So let's mute this bass here and unsolo this guy or unmute this guy. And we're kind of doing that. So let's add another oscillator, clicking the plus here. Now, this guy, we're not doing any voicing here, so we're kind of good on that side, right? We don't have anything extra. So in the VSAW area, the mix is going to be all the way 100% for the unison, and then we're using seven voices. So scroll down to seven voices and increase the mix slider all the way to the top. And this one as well is going to the ARP, so we can route that as well. And let's mute the first one. But we are also up one octave, so we can bring this octave up all the way to plus 12 semitones. Now this one also sounds different because we're using a different filter, which is gonna be filter two, and we're gonna be using the low pass, the Anna low pass 12. So let's add another filter, and it's gonna be this default filter, so that's fine. So on the second oscillator, we need to unroute it from the first filter, click the plus, and go to the second filter. So you have something kind of like that. Now this level is going to be substantially lower. So this level here is going to be at 42.55, something like that. Now for our cutoff settings, we are using our cutoff at 846. Something like that. And then our envelope amount is going to be 44.60. And we're going to be using a little bit of modulation here as well. So this guy is 4460. Now for this filter, what we need to do as well, because it sounds a little bit longer, right? We're changing a little bit of these parameters here. So our decay is going to be 3838. So let's bring this to the right. Something kind of like that. And then our curve, I believe, is the same, right? So our curve is going to be negative 1066, which on this guy is the same. Yeah, so we don't have to touch the curve at all for that. We just got to do the delay. Bring this volume down just a little bit here, something like that to match this guy. So negative 4.9. Okay, so we're pretty close here. So if we played both of these now. Sounds pretty cool. So before we get to the drums, let's kind of just finish up how these oscillators, kind of how I did it when I was creating this here. So let's mute the first one and let's take a look at our first guy. So our first guy has this delay and this is going to be on this sense. What we could actually do is turn on the master send here. Right, so 
Second delay for the first guy. We're gonna turn this guy on and then go to our send rack and turn this on. And the delay is nothing too crazy. We're on ping pong, it's one over eight. Uh, we can do a little bit of sliding in here so it's not too low end of the delays. Which yeah, I believe I did here as well, 350. And that's pretty much it for that. Nothing too insane for that guy. And then for the second one, if we look at this guy over here, so let's meet this guy again, look at our second and unmute that. So here we're actually just going to reverb at about 47%. So we can click the second one, click plus, and then send it to a reverb. And this is going to 47, something about like that. And then if we take a look at our reverb, it's nothing too crazy, right? We're on the AA uh, reverb, which for the most part, this is gonna be default. We can bring this up here, which we probably should. Did I do that here? I did not. So if you're making this patch, you might wanna bring this reverb up just a little bit, something like that to kind of make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So that's pretty much what we have to do for these sends for now. So if we unmuted both of these. Sounds pretty cool. So the first one again, we are going to the output effects one. So if you look at this first one, we just have a vintage chorus, right? So on our first effect stack, let's right click here and go to a vintage chorus. Now, for the most part, this is going to be default, but we are reducing the mix to 11.75. So let's bring this down to 11.75, something like that. And then the first guy is already gonna be routed to the first effects. If it's not, make sure to route it like that. And then the second guy as well is getting routed to the FX as well, so which is going to be this same vintage chorus. Which, no, I think we changed that actually. Yes. Yes. So this is going to be out effects too, right? Because I wanted, the, the whole issue was, I was like, I like this chorus here, but I wanted a little bit more for this guy. So, I could, you know, you could put it on a send, but whatever. Anyway, this is going to be at 25. So all we have to really do on the second oscillator, let's add another effects, right click, add a chorus and keep it at 25. That's fine. And then our second oscillator, let's click plus and route this to the FX2 and then take it, uh, it's not out of the first one. Okay, here we go. Cool. And one thing that kind of will clash between these two, if you listen to this first guy or second guy, there's a little bit of that low end that can kind of mess with this low end here. So the whole point here is on the second rack here, I right click here and then we add an EQ. So if we take a look at this EQ and open this like here, it's just really a high pass kind of going on here. And I believe, what are we at? Uh, 230 or 235. So if you open this guy up, we can right click this guy, go to high pass, and then kind of bring this up to, was it 235, something like that. Okay. Nothing too crazy there, so that's pretty much, I think, all we are doing for these two guys. Okay, so now we're pretty much the same. So, now comes the drums. Okay. So what we need to do, we go to our drums tab. So let's go to our drum tab here. And then for this kit, I use the Beat 90. So all we really have to do is click our drums and go down to the thing that's in the factory one and then Beat 90, just double click this guy. Now this will give us that drum beat. So we gotta go to the drum sequencer. And that was a little much. So on the top left, we can go to clear. And then here, if we look at our drum sequencer, it's pretty basic. There's not really too much going. We have a kick on everyone here. So we can go ahead and add that. So kick, kick, whoops, kick on all these lines here. So we, four on the floor as they say, right? And then we have this G sharp here, which is gonna be this hat. So which is this guy. And we're kind of just going every other one like that. So this G sharp here, let's take a look at this guy. And the volume, negative 6.23. I don't know if we changed that or not. No, we did not. The panning is gonna be all in the center. And yeah, we don't have to change anything for that. However, if we select this G here, we can see that this is going to the reverb and to the delay. So let's go add this to the reverb. And that is gonna be at about 20%, which is default, but that's fine. But then the delay is gonna be at 45, so a hefty amount there. Cause I kinda of like the hi-hats kinda of moving around a little bit. So 45, something like that. So if we just solo the drums.
Kind of hear those hi-hats bouncing left and right. Definitely pretty cool. So we're pretty close to being done. One of the last things that we do have to check is the master effects over here, which, uh, oh, I forgot to turn this guy on. There we go. So now in the master effects, if we take a look at this guy on the master effects, we have an EQ and then we have a compressor. So basically let's take a look at this EQ. It's kind of just a really small move. So if we click this on. Let's open up this guy. So we're here in the master. It's a uh, EQ. Open this guy up here. So basically, actually we can add to the compressor as well. What we're really basically doing here on this EQ is a little bit of corrective stuff. So if we opened this guy up right here and take a look at it, it's just kind of taking a little bit out of, what is this guy? 186.3, and then adding a little bit of a high shelf at around 5K-ish or so, something like that. So we can go ahead and do that if this lets us open. So we can bring this up and then right click this to a high shelf. So we're at like five something. How much did we bring this up? About 1.3, so very small moves, yeah. Nothing crazy. And then this guy here is going to be negative 2.7. So we can bring that negative 2.7. And then the frequency is about 186. So we can bring that down to 186. Something about right here. And then our compressor is, if we take a look at this here, 1 to 8 on this guy. So let's bring this to 1 over 8. And then we're kind of about negative 10-ish or so. And that's pretty much how this patch is done. Nothing too complicated. It's just kind of thinking about the bass, the mids, and the drums as well. So we have this guy's original. What's kind of cool before we let you go, so these notes, if you notice, the drums don't play, right? And then they start back once we start the sequence again. So if that's something you like or want to change or something like that, if we go to the zones, we can see down here on the drums, right? These notes down here are going to be in the same range. So this is going to be triggering the drums. However, if we play up here, it doesn't trigger the drums until we get to, I believe, here, which is going to be that limit there. So you can just drag that left and right depending on how you want that to work. But yeah, that's how that patch is made. I'm going to put it up regardless for download. If you'd like to free copy and you don't want to make it yourself, then feel free to click the link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.